Hello, hello everyone. Thank you for joining me in another video. So I went out to Michael's and I got some Arches watercolor paper. The fine grained one this time. Uh, if you may remember, I have the rough one that I purchased and didn't really like so much, but I wanted to give the fine grain one a chance and see um, how it compares to other watercolor papers that I have been using, such as the B paper, which is also fine grained and 100% cotton. And then, you know, I, I usually just use the Canson watercolor paper, but I've heard such good things about the Arches watercolor paper. So I went out and got this at Michael's. Like I said, um, it's 10 by 14 inches, 26 by 36 centimeters. It's a little big for my taste, so I'm going to cut it in half and work with half of what I have here. Um, also, this pad, it has 12 sheets and it was about $30, so that's that's a little pricey for me. Um, however, given the size, it makes sense and, you know, you can always cut it down if you want to. I wanted to buy the smaller one, smaller size, but it didn't have any, anyway. And I didn't want to get in on Amazon because I'm on Amazon way too much. So I went and bought this one. I took it out of the um, plastic and I thought it was another block, like, you know, taped or um, with adhesive on the side. It is not. Um, so I'm gonna take it out of, out of here and I'm gonna cut it to size. I also am working with some more of the graphite colors. I really liked the one that I did last week and I just enjoy the brighter colors with these dark and moody colors and so I want to pair it with the um, blues from the Art Nouveau set of the Kuretake one. I like this one. This one's a little bit when it mixes, I tried it off camera, when it mixes, it, it there's a lot of white in here. So I think I might start with this one and just add this one for a little bit more, I don't know, lightness, I don't know. So we're gonna, we're gonna do that. And then I want to try and pair it with the blue. The, I, I tend to gravitate towards these, these three here, the blue, the green and the violet. I want to say, all right, there's two, there's a little bit of a rougher side and a little bit of a smoother side, and I'm hoping that the camera will pick it up. Um, if not, you're just gonna have to trust me. I, but again, I don't know if it's, I don't get that feeling with the B paper. The Arches watercolor paper, it seems weird to me. And I've mentioned that in the other video too. Um, it's the texture of it. it gives me a little bit the hibbly jibblies, but <laughs> but we're just gonna. I think that's why I want to tape it down. I don't want to touch it too much. Otherwise, you know, I I like to move my paper around because I work with quite a bit of water, but I I, I don't want to touch it too much. So we're gonna tape it down. The paper is taped down and I have sprayed my watercolors with water. And so the goal is to put something down. <laughs> I'm laughing because I'm a little bit out of, out of ideas. And the reason why I'm out of ideas is because I've been working hard on my YouTube shorts and uh, I've worked over the break and I've done quite a bit of mini paintings that I want to put into shorts. And so I have done so many that I, I 
I'm not really sure what to do next. So anyway, these are going to come out starting December 1st. And I hope you like them. And if maybe I will put a poll at the end of the year to see if there's one that you liked best that you want to see uh, a full length video of because I do have all the footage of how I made these. Um, so I don't know that, that that might be something but yes so if you want to um, see how I am creating these they're shorts uh, because I can't deal with editing full-length videos for 24 days all right so we are going to start and like I said, I don't really have an idea, but hope I'm hoping that the ideas will flow once I start putting down colors. I am working on dry paper because I am going to add quite a bit of water, as you know. And I don't want to add too much water even though I'm sure this paper can take it whoa that was not supposed to happen but you know we'll see what happens with this guy oh again <laughs> uh, anyway there's another one coming. Maybe I'll just let him drip. How about that? We'll just let it drip off. Maybe I'm supposed to do that. Of course, when you want it to drip, then it's not going to drip, right? When I started out with uh, painting, I the hardest part for me was putting something down on a blank page. And I'm nearing two years of when I first started picking up a brush again. And I have to say that this form of creating has helped me so much getting rid of my fear of a blank page. I'm just gonna let this drip down and then I'm gonna move it the other way and then we'll see what comes of it. What I'm looking for is an interesting background, something that catches my eye that I can use to further embellish the piece. And at this point, I don't know at all what I'm going to do next once the colors are dry. Like I said, there's quite a bit of white in that light blue. It doesn't seem to be in the in the darker blue so much. So I'm getting a lot of gray right here because of that. There's a little bit of that darker blue shining through and I quite like that. So I'm going to try and enhance that part a little bit more. And I might also do it um, over on this side up here. The trick is to not make it look like you have intentionally put it there. I 
I also like that there is a little bit more blue, darker blue here. Once the color has started to move across the page, I can see a little bit better of what I can potentially, you know, enhance or do more of. Uh, I'm probably going to spray some water over on this end. So right now I don't like it, but let's see what happens with a little bit more water. I still have some blue on here, so I'm just going to bring that in the middle. So I want to bring in some of the gold and as you remember I wanted this one and I don't like I don't like these rough edges over on this side so I'm going to use the gold to soften up this side a little bit and I might also spray a little bit more water Bring that in a little bit more so it looks a little bit more organic. I'm concentrating on this part over here. And meanwhile, over here, something really pretty is happening. Um, I added a little bit more blue in the middle here and I, I don't like the, the transition so maybe we can add a little bit more of the gold and let this strip a little bit more. This is where the fine tuning comes in. How are we feeling about this? I'm gonna try and avoid spraying more water onto my page. And I have some more, I still have some gold on my, on my brush here and I'm dipping it into my graphite blue. I think I've mentioned this before. I, at this point, I don't know what I'm gonna doodle on. I don't know how this is gonna turn out. And nothing is standing out to me as of yet. Because I always feel like once it's dry, it looks completely different. And I also think it's it's good to walk away, let it dry, and then come back and look at it with a fresh pair of eyes. Because something else might pop into, into your um, head once you have given it a little bit of time. I like how the gold over here has faded out. I'm not seeing that over here. So I'm going to give it a little bit more water and maybe a little bit more gold and hope that it will give me that same fade. Yeah, I think that's better. All right. I think I'm happy with this. I have quite a few variegations of colors and then um, once it's dry I think I will find some fun and interesting things to use for my doodles.
All right, so I will be back once this is dry. Okay, it's all dry. The paper has relaxed again. It's not warped or anything. And I think I want to keep it in this direction. I will put it in time lapse for you because I don't really talk when I doodle. So if there's anything that I need to say, I will do a voiceover. But... Once I started doodling on this paper, I noticed immediately that again I was having a hard time with my fine liner pens. And I was really hoping that that wouldn't happen because if you remember or if you've seen my videos where I was using the Arches Rough watercolor paper, I was complaining that it was not very kind to my fine liner pens. And so I was hopeful that because this is the fine grained one, this wouldn't happen or I wouldn't feel that way. But I'm sad to say that I'm still kind of feeling like it's a struggle to, to doodle with fine liner pens. So if you are interested in getting this paper, just be aware of that. It really is just for watercolors and not so much for the fine liner pens. Later on, you see me using some of my watercolor pencils on it and again that too it was just eating up my watercolor pencils and I don't know if that's a good thing <laughs> because I I'm using it as a shading um, component in my my piece and not so much to actually work with watercolor pencils on the paper. Maybe I will do that next time. I will take out my my uh, my pencils and instead of the watercolors and use it that way. But yeah, uh, it was it was eating up my <laughs> my pencils and I I wasn't expecting that. So yikes. Yeah, here, right here this this point here. I was like, "Whoa. It made for some really great ASMR because you can really hear the scratching unfortunately you can't hear it in this video because I was listening to a podcast um, without my headphones on so I had to mute that but boy yeah anyway uh, just something to be aware of when you when you use this watercolor paper for the first time Thank you. 
But other than the struggles that I had with my pens and my pencils, I do love how the paint just does its thing on this paper. Because it's more absorbent and not as slick as the Canson watercolor paper, you do get these beautiful um, variations of the colors just flowing into each other and then drying that way. I feel like with the Canson watercolor paper, you get you don't get that you you get what you put on top and then it just dries and sometimes it dries a little bit more in a puddle but with this one it just as it dries it it seeps into the paper itself and and it just gives you really beautiful watercolor background and for that i i love this paper but yeah, I'm torn, guys. I don't know what to do. <laughs> I will play with it some more and maybe maybe I will use these papers for when I don't want to doodle. I don't know when that's going to happen because I'm still very much in the doodling phase. But maybe it is a sign for me to start you know doing something else and maybe use a different medium on top of the watercolors that is also a possibility i have some oil crayons that i have not used yet that are from my kids and uh, maybe maybe i will use those um, in future videos we'll see i only showed the white acrylic paint here but obviously I'm using for the gold and for the black I'm also using acrylic paint I just like um, that little bit of texture that it gives the otherwise very flat uh, painting but yeah other than that the paper dried really flat which I am not used to and I am appreciating so that might be another um, plus point for a slightly more expensive paper I'm saying it was expensive I think I mentioned it was like $30 but I think I paid closer to $40 for the 12 pieces of paper that you get on this but again it was a big a big pad so you can always cut it down and get more use of it so we're nearing the end of this video here and uh, I just wanted to once again thank you very much for tuning in I hope you enjoyed it leave me a comment let me know how you're doing let me know um, if you've worked with this paper before and what your thoughts are, I'm always curious to hear. And don't forget to tune in for the next 24 days of my little shorts that I'm posting. And other than that, I will see you next week with another long form video uh, on Friday. Mm -hmm.